What's up guys, Kiran here and today I'm going to be talking about Bitcoin. Now I used to have a position in Bitcoin back in 2015 but I actually sold for a profit because I needed the money and I didn't think the risk reward was in my favour. Now clearly that was a huge mistake because since then Bitcoin has returned over 20x return in those 5 years alone. Not my best investing decision, I must say. But since that time, I've clung to the thoughts of Charlie Munger, Peter Schiff, Warren Buffett, who call Bitcoin rat poison and for scumbags, because that's helped me feel better about my decision to sell and made me feel justified in what I did. Now, I still have a small bit of Bitcoin sitting in my wallet from all those years ago that was simply leftover change at the time. And in recent weeks, Bitcoin has started featuring heavily in my newsfeed. So I thought that this was the perfect time to look back into the infamous cryptocurrency and see if I should rid my portfolio of it altogether, buy more or simply hold what I have. I hope you enjoyed this video guys. Hit the like button, give me a thumbs up. If you don't, YouTube absolutely despises me, hates me, thinks I'm a criminal, doesn't recommend this video to anybody and nobody ever gets to see it, which is pretty shit. Anyway, with that being said, let's get into it. So the most bullish case I've heard for Bitcoin is that over the next two decades, a huge inflow of wealth causes the Bitcoin asset class to grow to become the largest asset class in the world and to a size of about $150 trillion. This gives us a price for one Bitcoin of $7.5 million. That's over 100x return from today's price alone. The bear case, of course, is that it simply goes to zero. So let's get into some of the arguments for why Bitcoin will not become the global currency of choice and the opposing counter argument. So the first major argument for Bitcoin is that it produces nothing, nada, zilch. It's about as useless as my nipples to my eight month old daughter. You see, when you buy a company, you can estimate the future cash flows and therefore determine a fair price. With Bitcoin though, it has no earnings. It doesn't produce anything and therefore the bears say that it has no value. And it's simply increasing in value over time because an even bigger idiot is willing to pay more for it than the person who bought it originally. Equally so, it has no utility. When you buy a house, you might not rent it out and produce an income off it, but at least you can bloody live in it. And it's the same thing with gold. While gold might not make a return for you or produce anything, it can always be melted down and used as jewellery or used to make a chip in your phone. And while searching for the bull counter argument to these points, I discovered that, well simply put, Bitcoin isn't an asset. An asset puts money in your pocket, while a liability takes money out of your pocket. And Bitcoin is trying to be neither. Instead, it's simply a store of value. So as a store of value, what's the point in trying to compare it to any other known asset class? The truth is that only time will tell if Bitcoin does indeed store value as well as some say it will. And if it does, well then, it has massive utility. From my personal experience, it's done a very good job at storing my value. That piece of change I have left over in my wallet from all those years ago is still there and it's increased massively in purchasing power. Well, I wish I could say the same for the change I find in the back of my couch. There will only ever be 21 million Bitcoin produced. This is finite. That means that it's deflationary in nature as more cannot be printed. Even gold increases at a rate of about 2% per year with mining. Bitcoin on the other hand is legitimately finite. So price is determined by supply and demand and with Bitcoin supply is restricted. So therefore, if demand stays as it is, price should increase over time. But I can't help go back to Mr. Munger's points on this though. We do need demand in order for it to be worth anything. If for some reason trust in Bitcoin suddenly evaporated and there was no demand, or demand suddenly started to decrease, well then what would happen to price? Well the downward selling pressure could make it close to worthless. Whereas if nobody wanted to buy your gold, well you could just hold on to it and eventually you'll find someone who'll have a use for it and you could sell it to them. But with Bitcoin, there is really no use other than storing value. And if the trust in that evaporates and it no longer stores value, well then it's worthless and it's useless. And I can see why the hardcore value investors have trouble coming to terms with this. It goes against the number one principle that they believe in when it comes to investing. Always invest in something that you can determine an intrinsic value for based on what it produces. 
Another argument against Bitcoin is its volatility. With such swings, it can't be used as a currency and thus has limited utility. I mean, how could you get paid in a currency that has such ups and downs over the course of a couple of weeks? How could you possibly agree a salary with your employer? So just to confirm then, my salary is going to be six Bitcoin. Okay. Yeah, no, I'd like to accept it then. Thank you, okay. Looking forward to starting. What do you mean you've gone broke and you can't afford to pay me? You've gone out of business. Why? Because your salaries are so high. Fucking Bitcoin. And it seems on this argument, the bears are very much correct. It is indeed too volatile to be used as a stable means of exchange. However, what the bulls say to counter this argument is how on earth can Bitcoin possibly grow to become the largest store of wealth in the world without massive volatility? If it has to take all this inflow of cash over the next couple of years, well then obviously the price is going to be massively volatile. Also, as more and more people adopt it as a store of value, then its volatility is naturally going to decrease over time. And this makes a lot of sense. In the end, I think that the bears are right here, and Bitcoin is indeed too volatile to be used as a stable means of exchange. And I remember from years ago that this is what all the hype was about. Many companies started coming out saying that they'd take Bitcoin as a means of payment. Years later, we can see that this has failed to gain traction, and it's obvious why. I am left thinking, however, so what? So it can't be used as a stable means of exchange or as a currency. But we have fiat currencies for this. But what we don't have is a reliable means of storing wealth that's integrated into our digital world. And if Bitcoin can become that, well then it doesn't need to be a stable means of exchange. The third argument I hear a lot is that you can't trust Bitcoin because it's not governed. And no, it's not, and it certainly has been the wild, wild west out there. However, this flaw is also Bitcoin's greatest strength. The lack of any one financial institution or government with control over Bitcoin makes it unique and a progression in free market capitalism. You see, people are inherently flawed when it comes to making financial decisions. We are corruptible, we are emotional, and we are illogical. To me, it makes complete sense that monetary decisions are preset by computer logic and not left to the whims of any one institution or government. Now, obviously, there needs to be more done to offer protection to people before Bitcoin can be adopted by anyone who's not particularly tech savvy. But as a technology, it's just 10 years old. I don't see why over the next decade or so, businesses won't innovate further, making Bitcoin safer and more accessible to all. We don't need government or central bank intervention. Sure, this would make the process much quicker, but at the expense of losing the very thing that makes Bitcoin absolutely unique and great. Bitcoin's growth and improvement must be slow and organic so no one government, institution or person can corrupt it. So after all my research, I'm left with a couple of thoughts. Number one, we need to go back on a gold-like standard. And call me modern, but I think there has to be a better alternative to gold. Gold has been the standard for the last 3,000 years. But look how much the world has changed in just the past 100. You're telling me that a better alternative can't be found? I mean, the internet is a brand new phenomenon and it has changed the world drastically. We are in a digital era. If you went back just 30 years, who would have believed that so much information would be on our phone? Video format at the click of a finger. Nobody would have thought it was possible. The change has been so immense that I think we'd be very ignorant to underestimate the speed at which technology can transform every facet of our world. And why would the monetary system not be included in that? So Bitcoin could go to zero. But it also has a chance of becoming the dominant store of wealth over the next few decades in a winner-takes-all fashion. Based on my research, I think that the risk-reward ratio is stacked ever so slightly in favour of reward. And on top of that, because it's so uncorrelated to most other financial assets, it offers unique diversification in this somewhat unsettling time. Are the young tech-savvy investors correct? Or in years to come, will we look back on the comments of Charlie and Warren and realise just how ignorant we were? And even if the bull case does win out, does that mean that Charlie and Warren are wrong? Or was it just that the belief in Bitcoin was so strong that we propelled it to greatness? Well, here's the hope when that Charlie is wrong, because I'm going to increase my position ever so slightly. I think that's all I'll be doing though, because while I'm excited about it, and I want to be along for the ride, I certainly won't be investing my house on it. So I hope you enjoyed watching this video, guys. If you haven't already, then for God's sake, would you please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell. Let me know in the comments below if you agree with me, and if not, why? I'd really love to hear your opinions on this one. Thanks for watching and have a lovely day.